ourselves for the word of God. Y'all ready for the word? Amen. Amen. All right. Well, we're going to get ready to jump into the word of God. Y'all already know how we do. Uh, let's stand for the reading of God's word. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. Amen. And again, thank you uh, for those that are here in the house. I love seeing you. Amen. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13, that's where the text will be coming from. This is our foundation scripture, our bedrock scripture. Uh, for those that are tuning in for the first time, we've been in a sermon series entitled Kingdom Business. Mm -hmm. well, kingdom we've been, Builders. Excuse me, Kingdom Builders. Yes. Uh, where we're, we're talking about uh, building God's kingdom and uh, some things that you have to practically have in, your, in place and in your life and some things that you need to be ascribing uh, to war so that you can be the best kingdom builder that you can be for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So Matthew chapter 16 and verse 13, it reads as this. Now when Jesus came into the district of Syria Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, you are Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we thank you for this word. We thank you for an opportunity, God, to go before you, Father. We pray, God, as voices, as mouthpieces for you, Father, that you would decrease us and increase you, Father. Let us speak only what you have for us to say on this morning. God, let us our voices travel, God, all the way via Facebook as well as to those here in the house. Father, those that may watch it next week this time, we thank you, God, that you'll allow the word to come alive in their spirit. And Father, we pray over this word, God, that it will bring increase and God, it will bring God what the people of God need in this season. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, let's give God some praise as you seat yourself. Amen. Uh, here in the uh, book of Matthew, this is our foundation scripture, uh, we can clearly see where uh, Jesus uh, began to ask his disciples, who do men say that I am? Who do men say that I am? Scripture says that uh, his disciples' response was, uh, well, some say that you are Elijah, some say that you're Jeremiah, even some say that you're John the Baptist. But then Jesus turns to those disciples and says, who do you say that I am? And it was only one that stood up to say that I believe you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And upon and, and then Jesus response to him was that uh, 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 Peter, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Yes. Um, having said that, one of the things that I clearly see here in the scripture is that uh, we're literally in that particular type of time right now where Jesus is asking his disciples, he's asking you and I, who do men say that I am? Mm. Who do men say that I am? And, and the whole thought is, uh, Jesus had to ask his disciples, who do men say that I am? Because he wanted to uh, gather some information as to what people thought about who he was. Mm. But then he began to turn and make it personal to those that he loved, the ones that he was teaching. And I believe God is saying the same thing to us during this time. Who do you say that I am? Uh, because at the end of the day, we're all disciples. Yes. You got to see this. Uh, Peter wasn't the only one that was there. It was some other disciples. But my thought is, why was Peter the only one that was able to stand up and say, thou art the Christ, mm. the son of the living God. Yes. A and when you start looking at this passage, literally it will show you that although you may be saved, although you might be believing God, and although you might be trusting God, it could be, you still could be in a place where you truly don't know who God is. Mm. Just because you go to church doesn't mean that you're, you're, you're saved and, and that you really know who God is for yourself. Yeah. But then this is where Jesus was saying, okay, Peter, because you have this right response upon 
this rock I'm going to build my church. Yes. In other words, God was saying, because you have this revelation of who I am, I can trust you to carry my church and allow it to be built upon your life. Yeah. And we all got to see it that same way. God has allowed us to walk and carry his church. The church is not a full, not the building. It is not the four walls. But it is the body. It is the people. So although many people may think that they can close the church. They can't close the church because the church will always remain open. Because it's not a building. It is the body of Christ. Amen. And I am the church. Uh, and when I started looking at this scripture and I started seeing where God began to lay out what the kingdom of heaven was given to us for and mm -hmm. how we have the power to operate in the kingdom. Uh, he told us that we can bind things on here on the earth yes. and loose things in heaven. So as believers of God, we have the power to bind and loose some stuff. So if we haven't used the authority that Christ Jesus has given to us, then we're wasting the power that God has already authorized us to do so we want to get in the, the mindset of being kingdom builders and yes. the kingdom builder or let's define the kingdom or what the kingdom is the kingdom is a spiritual realm over which God reigns as king or the fulfillment on earth of God's will it is the spiritual reign of authority of God so if we are kingdom builders if we have the authority if we have the power then we can speak to whatever we need to speak to and bind it in the name of Jesus yes, we yes. have the authority we've been authorized and deputized yeah. to get the job done we come have on, what on, it takes yes, we yes. have the authority and we talked about that in part one where we talked about legacy how legacy we've been authorized to work for the kingdom and we're also ambassadors for Christ not only are we ambassadors we we are kingdom builders who leave a legacy for God. Yes, and yes, then as yes. kingdom builders who leave a legacy, we're not afraid of using our natural legacy to help leave a spiritual legacy and we also determine that it's not amount the amount that you give that determines the power of the legacy that you lead and then finally we said we all have the power to leave a legacy uh, when we're talking about legacy we're talking about leaving something an example leaving a lifestyle that people can follow if your grandmother was saved and she taught you how to live for God she left a legacy yes. if we are people of God who have a heart for God's house and we say you know what I'm going to sow into the kingdom of God so that the years to come people can gather together that is leaving Hallelujah. a legacy so all tie in together and what legacy is all about amen in part two we begin to talk about evangel evangelism uh, and the thought was we all must do the work of an evangelist yes, we should. Uh, many people don't think that they're evangelists but all of us have been called to be the modern day evangelist yeah. what is that to go out into the highways and the hedges and compel people to come in mm -hmm. also number two uh, we have to open up our mouth and share our testimony Many people are afraid to uh, share what God has done with uh, to, for them and, mm. and, and through them. But uh, one of the greatest ways of witnessing is just by you sharing your testimony yeah. as to what God has done for, for you, where God has brought you from, some of the things God has delivered you from. All of those things will serve as a testimony and a testament of the saving grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We also begin to extrapolate the Dorothy effect. Somebody say Dorothy effect. Dorothy effect. Yes, it's just like the movie, The Wizard of Oz, where Dorothy was going to see the wizard. And because she was going to see the wizard, she had to stop by the, the scarecrow that didn't have a brain. She had to stop by the tin man that didn't have a heart. She had to uh, stop by the lion that was uh, cowardly. Um, but through it all, she began to take all of them to see the wizard. Likewise, we must all take people that don't have a brain, people yeah. that don't have a heart, people that are scared to serve God. We got to take them to see our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, so that they can get the healing and deliverance that they need. And then finally, we talked about that we d should not forget the generations behind us because our children need the gospel too. This is where we got to be very careful nowadays because our children, they're watching our life. Mm -hmm. Our children, they're watching our approach. They're wanting to uh, see if we really believe the God that we say that we believe. Yeah. They want to see if we're really going to serve the God that we say that we're going to serve. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a firm believer that some things aren't taught because at the end of the day, most things are literally caught. 
They can catch things from your life. They yes. can catch how you love God. They can catch how you praise God. They can catch how you, you're fervent in your prayer and your yeah. walk toward the things of God. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, our children, they're watching our life too. And we don't want to be a bad example mm -hmm. uh, because we want to make sure that they have a great example that they can follow through the life that we live. Amen. In part three, we talked about spiritual acuity. Uh, we have a we have to run this race with our eyes acutely fixed on Jesus, and that has to be our mindset. Uh, we must have spiritual acuity, meaning mm -hmm. that we can't use our natural senses as a source, but our source should always be the spirit. Uh, when others see giants, those with spiritual acuity see the promises of God, and we can't follow the crowd. Everyone, everyone won't see what we see and like we see, and that's absolutely fine. So we talked about spiritual acuity, how to make sure our eyes are locked on what Jesus is doing, not looking to the left and looking to the right, not being fearful like this world. We are not set up yes. to be like this world. The world is afraid. The world is fretful. The world is running out and buying all kinds of stuff. But we as believers have to take the position of a believer. Yes. Believers believe. And that has to be our mindset. We can't get off track. We can't get off focus. We got to keep our focus on the main thing. And the main thing is Jesus Christ. And we can't look to the left and to the right and try to decide or make our mind up based on what the world is doing. We are not of this world. We are kingdom builders. Hallelujah. And we're here on assignment. And we are ambassadors for the king. Amen. And that leads us to the new new. The D which stands for determination somebody yes. say determination determination yes in order to be that kingdom builder you have to have determination so yes. let's define determination I believe the power to define gives us the ability to fulfill determination mm. is firmness of purpose mm. it is resoluteness yes it is a quality that makes you continue trying to do or achieve something that is difficult the will to not let anything stop you. Yes. This is something that we all must have as kingdom builders mm -hmm. or believers. We have to have determination to where we don't relent because things begin to get hard and difficult. Yeah. Uh, we have to have determination because it is one of those things that will help drive you to the place of total fulfilled purpose mm -hmm. that God has associated with your life. Yeah. I, I want to begin to allow you to look at where it says uh, determination is firmness of purpose. Mm -hmm. We all got to understand that God has called us for a certain purpose. He's yeah. called us for a certain work. Uh, and because he has called us to a certain purpose, I'm a firm believer that if you're walking in purpose, you can't die before your time. Amen. And if you're walking in God's purpose that he has for your life, the purpose that you're walking in will literally serve as protection for your life. Yes. You got to see this because God knows that all of us, we have an appointed time to die. We all have an appointed time. Uh, we all know that because we came into this life, uh, we got to exit out of this life. Yeah. But while we're in this life, we should be walking in purpose. Yes. But for those that are, are walking in purpose, you don't have to be afraid of what's going on around you. Amen. Because you're protected by the purpose that God has associated with your life. Yes. But this is when you got to be determined. Mm. This is when you got to stand assured in what you know God has called you to do. Yeah. Because determination means that I'm going to be firm in what God has purposed for my, my life. And although things may be going on around me. The purpose that I'm in is the bubble that's going to protect me and allow me to allow the will of God to be done in my life. Yes. So as a believer, this is not the time to be scared. Yes. This is not the time to be backed up and moved by what's going on around you. If you are sure that God loves you, yeah. that God cares for you, yeah. and he has a plan associated with your life, you can know that you can be determined in the things of God because you are protected in his purpose that he has called for you to walk in in your life. Amen. Give God some praise for that. We're protected in purpose. 
And when you know what your purpose is, you're, you know you, you're not going anywhere until yeah. God gets that purpose fulfilled in your life. No matter what evil comes your way, when you're walking in the purpose of God, God is going to protect you to do what he's called you to do. If he's assigned something for your life and that is assignment doesn't expire till 2075, you're going to be here till until 2075. 2075 because God has a purpose designated for your yeah. life. All of us have, have our time that God has an appointment set for us so we can run this race and we can trust God the entire time because we're going to be protected in the purpose that he has for our lives. So when you're walking in your kingdom assignment and you're walking in the purpose of God, you ought to know that God is going to maintain you and keep you all the way. Amen. Amen. And this should be our mindset when we're going through every test and trial. And that is Philippians 4 and 13. It says, I can do all things, all things. through Christ, all which strengthens me. Some things. All things. A little bit. Just a few things. All things. I can do all things. That means I can go through this time that we're going through right now. People don't know where they're going, left or right. People are buying Lysol like it ain't no tomorrow. <laughs> they wiping down hands. They walking around scared, fighting in the store, talking about give me six feet. All of this is going on because they don't know that God is able to bring them out. But we as believers, we got to walk in faith. We got to walk in courage. We got to walk by yes. faith and not by sight. We can't yes, live yes, 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 in yes. the system of this world. Our faith has to be strong. Our faith has to be secured. They have to see a difference. If we're not any different from those on our job who are fretful, and I know some people are losing hours. There are some people who positions may be closed down at the time. There may be some people who are going through and they don't know where their money are go is going to come from. But can I say that you as a believer, you have a resource yes. and you have a yes. source. Your source is Christ Jesus. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. He's going to make sure everything is going to work out for your good. We're sitting and we're thinking, oh, I got all this going on. But you got to trust God in all things because you can things. make it out in, all, in things. all things. We can't get fretful and say, well, I don't have no hours this week. So what I'm going to do next week? That's when you turn to the Lord yeah. and say, Lord, you already have it written. You know what I need, Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. You're going to make the way you're going to provide for me. You are Jehovah Jireh, my provider. So I'm going to stand and trust your word for my life. Now, the world will be fretful. The world is going to go stir crazy. But that is where we stand out and we make the difference. We're the ones giving God the praise in the midst of trouble. We're the ones giving God the praise when things are going Amen. crazy all around us. Yeah. We're the ones that have to stand assured in who God says that we are. Amen. Because at the end of the day, your Lysol is going to run out. Mm. It sure but the blood in of the Jesus <laughs> never loses it's power. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. We, we, we say these things as believers. We say these things. But now is a time where we really got to believe it. Yes. It's either true or it's not true. Yes, yes. And that's where I am as a believer. I'm like, hold on, Lord. Either your word is true yes. or it's a lie. But if your word is true, yes. I ain't got nothing to worry about. Because yes. a thousand shall fall at your right hand. Hallelujah. 10,000 at the left. Yeah. But none of those things will come nigh my dwelling. Yes. And you got to believe this thing. Because just as you said, you know, we all have an expiration date based on what God says concerning our life. Mm. But everything that we face in between, mm. it's going to expire before we expire. Yes. So you ain't got to be worried about what's coming or what's going or this, that, and the other or where you're going to have a job or what this virus or this disease is no because at the end of the day god still has everything yes, in he control does. yes he does and because he has everything in mm. control you don't have anything to worry about somebody Amen. say don't worry don't worry about a thing about a thing yes don't worry <laughs> because determination get this it will keep you going in the troubled time yeah determination will keep you going in troubled times. We're in troubled times while many people are bowing out mm. and many people are backing up yeah. and many people are 
reserved in their commentary. You got to mm. see this. Because fear, it will cause people's commentary to change. Mm. Because you got to see this. We're, we're not in a society where we're saying that we're believing God for 100,000. Mm. And you got to stretch your faith. <laughs> and you got to pull the lever. And you got to turn around and God is going to do this or that, uh, that and other. No, no, no. Where, where are those people now? Because the same faith that you need to believe God for your, for your, for your finances yeah, yeah. is the same faith you're going to need to believe God that he's going to keep you and protect you through the hard and difficult times yes, of life. Yes, yes. So this is not the time to back up. This is the time to continue to build God's kingdom. Yes, yes. Don't y'all know this is the greatest opportunity to tell somebody, hey, although they ain't got no lights all in the store, I got something that you can spray on your life. I got something that you can put on the doorpost of your house yeah. that will never run out. Yeah. And when the virus comes in, it has to pass over. Yeah. And it's called the blood of Jesus. Yeah. This is the time to build God's kingdom. Yes. Because we're standing on faith. We believe in his promise, and it is time for God's glory to be shown on this earth. Yeah. And it's going to happen through the life and the lifestyle that you live as a believer. Amen. We got to speak ourselves into it. We're all the uh, speak lifers. Yeah, Everybody speak that's life. speaking life. Them. You're speaking life? Yeah. Let's speak life over this situation. All those positive confessions. Yes. We Begin need y'all now. Where y'all at? Not just for our money, but also that God continues yeah. to cover our lives. Well, the prophets that can see everything. Yes. I'm not talking about the ones that you can see your address. I'm talking about the ones that can hear and, and declare what thus saith yeah. the Lord. Yeah. This is that time where literally God is going to separate the sheep from the goat. Yeah. And you're going to begin to see those that are really believers during yeah. this time. Yeah. Those that, true, that, that clearly have a prophetic voice in this earth yes because you can't be driven by money during this time and that's what was happening so many the prophets they were in it for profit mm. but but where where's the voice where's the voice we got to be the ones mm. that cry loud and spare not yes in the wilderness saying that everything is going to be all right that all will be well concerning my household Mm. And we're going to declare the goodness of the Lord yes. in the land of the living, yes. in the midst of what's going on in right the now. Midst of going on. And let's talk about uh, 2 Corinthians 4.16, and I know we're kind of pressed for time. Uh, for 2 Corinthians 4.16 says, therefore, we do not lose heart. But though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day yes. for momentary light afflictions is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. While we look not at the things which are seen for at the things that which are seen for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are are eternal so these light afflictions yes. the scripture says of oh, light afflictions these things produce for us the et et eternal weight of glory so the light afflictions that we may be facing the light afflictions that we may be going through these are just light things we can trust God and just believe God for what he says that we are and who he says that we are we got to begin to speak the word of God in season yes. and out of season yes. we got to speak the word when it's not popular when people on the job saying, girl, please, I don't want to hear nothing about that Jesus stuff. I, my check short. Let me tell you about the one who can increase your life, not yes. just your check. The check is just temporary. Yes. But I'm talking about an increase of life. I'm talking about going from faith to faith, glory to glory, where you're going from one nation or one kingdom over into the other, and which is the kingdom of God. We can't be caught up in what this world is doing. In this season, I want everybody to understand where we should be positioned, and that is in faith. Everything we say got to be faith. Everywhere we go, we got to speak faith. When we wake up in the morning, we got to say, Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you thank you. I woke up this morning saying, God, I thank you for them scientists coming up with whatever they need to come up. He wired their minds to be able to come up with stuff. He wired me to love the word. He wired them to love all them little numbers and figures to figure out stuff. I said, well, God, you wired them. To be able to figure out diseases and how to combat these things. Yeah, so God, yeah. continue to work what you're doing in their life and give them wisdom to come up with what they need to come oh, up hallelujah. with so this thing can 
Passover. Passover. We got to walk in faith. Yeah. We can't walk in fear, but we have to be praying. We can't be saying what the world is saying. So, oh, everybody on lockdown. We got to do this. We got to do that. Oh, we can't go nowhere. We can't do this. We can't do that. Oh, my throat. <laughs> Rona, is that you? Every five seconds. But we got to trust God. Believe yes. God. Walk by faith, not by what we see. We come can't on, walk by what this world is doing. We got to walk by faith and faith alone. Amen. James 1 and 12 says this. Great blessings belong to those who are tempted and remain faithful. Yes. After they have proved their faith, God will give them the reward of eternal life. Yes. God promised this to all people who love him. Yes. So as believers, we have to make sure that we're staying faithful mm. to the things of God. And as long as we're staying faithful to the things of God, God's blessing will belong to us. Yes. God, this thing has not caught God by surprise. What we're going through, it has not caught God by surprise. But what God is looking for or from us is faithfulness. Mm. Faithfulness to the things of God. Yes. Faithfulness to who he is. And as long as we remain faithful, God will continue to be our source. As a matter of fact, mm. the scripture says, faithfulness shall abound in a person's life and they'll receive the blessing that he has to bestow upon yes. their life. So I just want to encourage you, right now is not the time to back out. Back up. Today is the time where you need to dig in. Yeah. Hunker down on the things of God. Hunker down on the promises of God. Knowing that there is a blessing in suit for those that will remain faithful. Amen. So we're going to close out. Uh, to be a kingdom builder, we must leave a legacy for others to follow and keep souls in the forefront of our mind by evangelizing daily. We also must keep our eyes acutely fixed on Jesus and be determined to hear well done by using what we have to serve God and to serve others. Any leaders in the building? Yeah. Anybody determined to lead? Amen. Come on, let's get on our feet and let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Let's bless God a little bit more here in this place. Amen. Father God, we thank you. We thank, thank you for Lord. your word. Come on, let's stretch up these hands. Let's stretch up our hands. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for an opportunity to come together. We thank you for an opportunity to fellowship and, yes. and gather as believers, as your ecclesia, the church, the body of Christ. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, that we can share this time one with another, Lord God, loving on each other. Lord God, seeing each other's faces, allowing encouragement uh, to begin to flow in the atmosphere in the name of Jesus. Yes, Hallelujah. Those that may be lonely, Lord God, I pray for them right now. Yes. Those that are in despair right now, yes. I pray for them right now. Those yes, that don't know whether they're coming or going, Father God, we pray for them right yes. now. And we decree and declare, Lord God, Hallelujah, that you will lead them and protect them and keep your hand upon their life yes, right God. now in the name yes, of God. Jesus. And Father God, we thank you for giving us an opportunity to stand strong. We thank you for an opportunity opportunity to use wisdom and to remain in faith Lord God yes. because you said in your word that it is the just that shall live by their faith and Father God we can stand and be of good courage and we can be of good cheer knowing that you have everything in control we can know Lord God that you have the whole world literally in your hands and because yes. of that father we know that everything is going to be all right in the name of Jesus yes. and Plead the blood over every every person right now in the name yes, of God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Every partner, blood, Lord God, blood, every family member, blood. every friend right now. Yes, God. Lord God, we cover them with your blood in thank the name you, of God, Jesus. For the blood of and Jesus. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, because your blood, it will never Hallelujah. lose its power yes. in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's able to eradicate sin yes. and it's able to keep us protected yes, as God. believers. So Father God, we stand on your word, never wavering, and we say thank you, Lord God, you, for Lord. giving us an opportunity to serve you, yes. to praise you, yes. to worship you, and to magnify you together in this gathering. And we give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, let's yes. give God some praise.